Hey, babe, how big is this microphone? Hmm, I don't know, about six inches. Yeah, that's what I thought too, just your average size microphone. Hey, my name is Matt Johnson with whoismatt.com, and this is the cute, little, tiny ECM G1 microphone from Sony. I bought this microphone because one of my resolutions for this year was to film my family more, so I wanted to invest in an on-camera microphone that would sound better than the in-camera microphone on my a7S III, while also hopefully being good enough for me to be able to use it as a shotgun microphone in a professional environment as well, like filming a wedding or vlogging myself for a YouTube video, etc. Well, spoiler, I'm returning the G1. And in this video, I want to review this microphone and tell you why I'm shipping it back. Also, for the sake of ethics, I want you to know that this video isn't paid or sponsored by Sony. I bought this mic from B&H with my own money and I'm returning it to B&H to get my own money back. To start this review, the first thing you're gonna notice about the G1 is this mic is tiny. I know I said that at the start of this video, but I really cannot reiterate how compact it is. I'm really not sure how they could make it much smaller than this. The compactness is very impressive. And having a relatively small microphone is important to me because my main microphone that I've used for years has been the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, which is a great microphone, but it is truly massive in comparison to this one. You could fit like 10 of these Sony mics into one Rode VideoMic. Now, I have nothing against the Rode VideoMic. It works great, but I have been wanting a smaller microphone. And in addition, ever since Sony released the ECM B1M microphone that I reviewed in 2021, that included the ability to have the microphone be powered by the camera's hot shoe and also have the audio interface run through that hot shoe and not having to deal with worrying about my 3.5 millimeter audio jack breaking, there have been a lot of arguments for me to switch to a Sony mic. And I intended to do that, but then the supply chain shortages happened and the ECM B1M wasn't even available for purchase. Fast forward a couple years now and not only is the ECM B1M finally now available for 350 bucks again, but in 2022, Sony also announced a mid-range mic model, the ECM B10 for 250 bucks, as well as this super compact option, the ECM G1 for 150. And I figured, hey, I can save some money and get the super compact G1 microphone for filming my family, as well as potentially using it to make some YouTube videos. Sounds awesome. And it's compact and cheap. But what else can it do? Because if you remember in my ECM B1M review, that mic was stacked with features, including the ability to change the microphone recording pattern, switch how the microphone was recording, etc. It's an incredibly powerful microphone. Well, it's no surprise that the G1 stripped a lot of those features away in the name of compactness and price, but what this mic loses in features, it gains in simplicity. This is easily the dead simplest microphone that you will probably ever use. It's plastic, but it's well-built overall. It comes with a dead cat, and you literally plug it into your Sony camera, and as long as your camera is a newer model with the multi-interface hot shoe, the mic just works. There are no settings to change. Heck, you can't even adjust the gain. That is all handled automatically in camera. Honestly, if I was a brand new filmmaker with a smaller budget and I wanted a microphone that I could put on my camera and literally forget that it's there and not have to ever deal with setting audio levels again, I would heavily consider buying this mic. It's fantastic for that. Now, I will say that if you want to be able to adjust the volume manually, you can still do that, but you have to plug the included 3.5 millimeter mic jack cable into the side of the G1 microphone and then plug that into your camera. And while it's a good workaround, at the same time, I feel like one of the main draws of this microphone is the simplicity that you get from being able to power and record it through the hot shoe. And if you take that away, there are a ton of other microphone options out there. So I wouldn't buy this mic unless you're planning on using it as it's intended to record through the hot shoe. Anyways, the mic is super compact and super easy to use. So why am I returning it? Well, we need to talk about the audio quality because that is where this mic starts to falter and audio quality is really important. In my testing, I found the super cardioid pattern of the microphone to work very well for isolating me speaking, especially when I was speaking straight into the microphone. But where I had the biggest issue with the microphone comes down to the noise floor and overall range of sound that the microphone was picking up. In regards to the noise floor, I found it to be too high, where I could definitely hear a bit of a hiss when recording, especially when using headphones. And on top of that, I also found the mic to be lacking in being able to record 
deeper, bassier notes. Here's an audio example for you that will show you those issues. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay, this is the Sony ECM G1 microphone on the Sony A7S III. It's about two feet away from me right now. And while I'm talking here, I want you to pay attention to the bass reproduction of this microphone, specifically in my voice, those deeper tones. And I also want you to pay attention to the noise floor and see if you're able to pick up any hissing sound coming from the low end as well. To be clear, I've not adjusted this audio sample in any way. This is directly from the camera, and I will include a link down in the description to a raw video clip that has the audio being recorded through this microphone, so you can download it and import it into your video editing software and see how it sounds, especially whenever you play around with it and add some effects, clean up the audio, etc. So, should you buy the ECMG1? Here's the answer. If you're planning on getting this microphone for vlogging home videos or anything like that, the audio that you're gonna get from this mic is still much better than what you're getting directly from the built-in camera mic, and I think you'll be very happy with it. But if you're planning on using this mic in a professional aspect where you're recording audio for a paid gig, in that case, I don't think that the audio quality is quite there, and that is why I will personally be returning this microphone to Sony and poning up another 200 of my dollars for the ECM B1M. I think the G1 would be fine for my family home videos, but because I want a microphone that will be usable for professional videos as well, I think that the extra $200 is worth it, even if that mic is quite a bit bigger. Speaking of worth it, you need to check out my edit videos like a pro guide. This guide is completely free and it's gonna walk you through some steps you can take to edit your videos even better than ever before. I will link to the guide down below for free for you to check it out. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Matt Johnson, the guy with a beard that is definitely bigger than this microphone. Take care and have a great day.